Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You watching South Asia news line and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday the 8th of November. Smog tower restarted early winter break announced in Delhi schools amid pollution. Taliban accuses Pakistan of humiliating Kabul through expulsion of immigrants. And one killed as garment workers clash with police in Bangladesh over pay rise. And now for all the details, a toxic smoke continued to shroud parts of New Delhi on Wednesday as air quality in the Indian capital remained in the severe category, hovering above the 400 mark. As the situation worsens, the smoke tower in the city was restarted a day after the Supreme Court lashed authorities for their lack in efforts to curb pollution. The smoke tower in the Connaught Place area was installed in the year 2021 on an experimental basis but was defunct as State Pollution Board termed it ineffective in dealing with the situation. Look, now it's going to be coming to Diwali and now it's going to be so much pollution. So after Diwali, how much pollution will be? So when COVID was coming, we were going to be masked. And now we're not going to be COVID, so we're going to be masked. Because of pollution, our health is bad, our breathing problems are bad. So I think smoke tower will help help solve that thing. Well, on Wednesday, authorities also announced an early winter break in schools until 20th of November. As part of measures, local construction has already been stopped while odd even rule for vehicles will kick off after Diwali. A cocktail of factors, including vehicular emissions and stubble burning, are being held responsible for the air pollution in Delhi. Moving on, stepping up campaigning in Madhya Pradesh, which is set to vote on the 17th of November, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday said he will take India's economy to top position in the world in his third tenure. The Prime Minister said that from ground to space, India is now being applauded everywhere. Intensifying attack on opposition Congress, he said, when the BJP formed a government at the centre in 2014, he punctured all the tyres of Congress' corrupt machinery. He said Congress means guaranteed destruction. जब मैं तीसरी बार मेरा सेवा काल शुरू होगा मैं इस देश की अर्थव्यवस्था को दुनिया की टॉप तीन में ला करके रहूंगा भाई हमारी गारंटी खजाने लुटाने की नहीं होती है हमारी गारंटी देश को आन बान शान के साथ आगे ले जाने की होती है Meanwhile, Congress General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi also addressed a series of rallies in Madhya Pradesh. The elections in five Indian states this month are expected to give an indication of voter mood ahead of the national elections next year. Well, hundreds of school children in Pakistan's Karachi city on Wednesday held a march expressing solidarity with Palestine in the ongoing conflict in the West Asian region. The rally, organized by hardline Jamaat Islami Party, saw children from various age groups holding placards reading Free Palestine, while some were also seen dressed up as members of Hamas, designated as terror organization by Western governments. Calls were also made to defend the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, regarded by Muslims as the third holiest site in Islam. In recent days, several such protests have been organized in Pakistan by hardline extremist organizations expressing solidarity with Palestine and Hamas in the conflict with Israel. Islamabad has never had any diplomatic relations with Tel Aviv and does not recognize Israeli sovereignty. The kids are demanding that these children why do they not look at their lashes? 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 From the Islam and the Islam, they have appealed to them that you go ahead and tell them to Israel. These children were doing this with Hamas. These children were doing this with Palestinian Muslims. Moving on, reacting sharply to the expulsion of Afghan immigrants from Pakistan, Taliban authorities have termed the forced deportation as an attempt to exert pressure on Kabul. Accusing Islamabad of using the expulsion as a mean to humiliate Kabul, Taliban's foreign minister, Amir Khan Muttaki, said 
Such actions will only strain the already complex relationship between the two neighboring countries, the Kama Press reported. He added that the decision was unilaterally taken by Pakistan even after concerns were shared by Afghanistan. Brushing off calls from the United Nations, rights groups and Western embassies, Islamabad started deporting Afghans from Pakistan from 1st of November, saying they had been involved in militant attacks and crimes that undermined the security of the country. And a think tank study has found that amid a worsening in global financial conditions, Sri Lanka and Argentina remain very vulnerable. While China has suffered a sharp deterioration in financial resilience since pre-COVID times. A severe shortage of dollars stepped Sri Lanka into its worst financial crisis since independence, triggering its first foreign debt default last year. The study by Washington-based Center for Global Development calculated external financing needs by measuring short-term external debt plus current account deficits as a proportion of international reserves. The island nation has shown signs of recovery recently, but its economy is still expected to contract by 2% in 2023 after shrinking 7.8% last year. Well, one garment worker was killed and several others were reportedly injured in Bangladesh on Wednesday after garment workers clashed with police during their protest demanding a bigger pay rise. The renewed protest erupted after the government said that the minimum wage would rise by 56.25% to 12,500 taka a month from 1st of December, the first increase in five years. However, the hike was rejected by garment workers who have been demanding the minimum wage to be fixed as 23 thousand taka. Low wages have helped Bangladesh build its garment industry with some 4,000 factories employing 4 million workers supplying brands such as H&M and Cap. Ready-made garments are the mainstay of the economy accounting for almost 16 percent of GDP. And the mesmerizing autumn season is at its peak in India's Jammu and Kashmir, attracting tourists from across the country who are flocking the Mughal Gardens to witness the picturesque atmosphere created by Chinar trees. Take a look. A large number of domestic tourists are thronging India's Jammu and Kashmir to enjoy the autumn chill and catch a glimpse of the fiery Chinar or Oriental Plain trees at the Mughal Gardens. The unique chinar leaves turn red and golden brown before falling on the ground, giving a kaleidoscope look to the valley, which has always attracted nature lovers. Jaisa suna tha aur jaise videos dekhe, alhamdulillah usse kahi zada, matlab hamare expectation se bahut zada hai. Especially aaj hum matlab autumn season mein aaye, hamara first day hai Kashmir visit pe, aur hum yahan Nishad Garden mein hai presently. और ये वर्थ विजिटिंग जगह है इतना मज़ा आया हमें इतना खूबसूरत चीज़ है इतने खूबसूरत चिनार पेड़ है और यहाँ पर चलना इस पर एक अलग ही मज़ा देता है मतलब स्वर्ग कहते हैं ना धरती पर है बेशक है यहाँ आए और इसका लुत्फ उठाएं बेशक आपको बहुत मज़ा आएगा चिनार ट्रीज आर द मेजर अट्रैक्शन ऑफ द टूरिस्ट सीजन दैट यूजली बिगिन इन अक्टूबर एंड लास्ट टिल अर्ली डिसम्बर The autumn season is also known as Harur in the local language which denotes the foggy season with different hues in the air. It's awesome, it's wonderful and it's it's a beautiful autumn. It's it's I've come here I've come here for the first time and it is really really the way they say it's um it's a paradise it's seriously uh, the icy paradise that anybody would want to come and see and cherish memories for the rest of their lives. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.